the high school graduating class of 1980, and these are the high school graduates of 2020. Notice anything different between these two images? Look at the men. Now look at the class of 2020. You don't see men there, do you? Those are boys, not men. Male sperm count has plummeted by 50% since the 1970s. Erectile dysfunction, social anxiety, low confidence, fear of talking to women, obesity, low sperm count, difficulty building muscle, depression, and lack of motivation. Those are just a few problems modern men are facing more than any generation ever before. And what's the cause of all this? Low testosterone. Testosterone is the major sex hormone found in men. It is essential to the development of male growth and masculine characteristics. It's what makes men, men. In this video, I'm going to break down the major causes of low testosterone in today's world. And stay tuned till the end of this video because you will not believe some of the causes of low test on this list. Also, don't worry just yet because I will be showing you how to overcome these modern struggles at the end. The mass murder of men in these modern times is soybeans. These little shits may look harmless, but don't be fooled. When soy was first brought into the US in 1804, dairy farmers went crazy for it. Soy was super cheap and very high in protein, which made it great for feeding their cows. But it also contained something else, extremely high levels of estrogen. Estrogen, if you don't know, is the female's major hormone. It's what testosterone is to men, but for women. It's what makes women, women. When estrogen levels get too high, especially in men, it can lead to lots of problems like slow growth, shrinking muscle mass, weight gain, infertility, and of course, low testosterone. And these little beans happen to have more estrogen than any other bean in history. One cup of soybeans has the same level of estrogen as 20,000 cups of chickpeas, which made soy perfect for fattening up farmers' cows. Thanks to the amount of estrogen in soy, cows became super, super, super fat. The more fat the cows were, the more money the farmers would make. By force feeding estrogen to cows, farmers are also force feeding us estrogen through their meat and milk. But who cares, right? Cows were now bigger and juicier than ever before, and so nobody complains. Soy is now a miracle food for not only the American meat industry, but the food industry around the world. Soy was super cheap and could be changed into anything your stomach desired. Food companies then started to create cheap soy food derivatives. Alright, let me see if I can find any soy in my house. Let's see what we got here. Protein bar. Soy protein isolate. Soybean oil. Soy lettuce in. Soy lettuce in. Organic sprouted soybeans. Soybean oil. Soy lettuce in. I literally couldn't find anything that doesn't contain soy. As you can see, soy is found in so many different foods. Some Americans switch from beef burgers to soy burgers. French fries are fried in soy oil. And soy based formulas are now being fed to babies. To make matters worse, it's not only soy that kills testosterone, it's what grows on soy. After soy gets harvested, it gets stored for several months in grimy storehouses. And what happens when you store any kind of food in grimy storehouses for several months? Mold will start to grow. The same mold that you find on old walls in your basement is floating around in your soy milk. And mold is also highly estrogenic. So if you haven't already, it's time to cut out these artificial foods. And when it comes to beef, only eat grass-fed cow beef. But cutting out soy-based foods is just the first step. Many countries like China and the EU have banned the use of estrogenic chemicals. Meanwhile, the US runs on them. Estrogenic chemicals like APEs, phthalates, and parabens make America's economy go round. Farmers don't want to waste money on organic farming methods, so they spray highly toxic pesticides on their plants. McDonald's doesn't want stale bread, so they include an estrogenic chemical named azodicarbonamide, also known as yoga mat material, in their bread to make their buns more soft. A testing company researched more than four 450 plastic items from stores like Walmart and Whole Foods and found that 95% of products showed signs of estrogenic activity. The estrogen found in plastic materials is called BPAs and even the companies claiming BPA free products all contain BPA. These food companies publish scientific studies trying to show that these chemicals are safe and harmless. They use words like unlikely in their studies to make it seem like it's not a big deal. They're not saying the chemical atrazine doesn't cause breast cancer, they're just saying that it's unlikely unlikely to cause breast cancer, even though other scientific studies show that atrazine definitely does cause breast cancer. The point is, don't trust all the food you're consuming. You have no clue what it is you're eating or drinking in that matter. 
66% of adults in the US use pharmaceutical drugs, antidepressants, anti-addiction, bipolar agents, hormonal agents, one of the most widespread of drugs being birth control. Birth control pills contain something called ethanol estradiol, a type of estrogen. The thing about these pills is that only 10% of them get absorbed in your body. The other 90% gets wow. Wow. urinated out, which gets flushed down the toilet and makes its way to water treatment facilities. So all this ethanol estradiol makes their way to our water treatment facilities, most of which are ancient and don't have the capabilities to filter out all these chemicals. All these pharmaceutical drugs and estrogenic chemicals are then advanced through to our tap water. This is because because they aren't getting filtered out. And even a small amount can cause damage. So can contact with tap water through your shower. You wonder why all these self-improvement influencers say to drink bottled spring water. Luke Belmar, Andrew Tate, Iman Godzi, and so many more. But the water they drink is all glass bottled. Because plastic bottles contain phthalates, which you probably already guessed, mimics estrogen. The glass water bottle brands I recommend are Aquapana, Mountain Valley, and Antipode Sparkling Water. I don't know if I said that right. But if you're like me and can't afford some of these bottles, I would stick to plastic bottled spring water, as it is the next best thing. And water is extremely important. Most of your body is composed of water, so why would you not want to give yourself the best source of water available to you? But the attack on testosterone doesn't end there. I mentioned phthalates, parabens, and APEs already. But what you didn't know is that these estrogenic chemicals are literally found everywhere. They're in the air, in pesticides, and in about every skincare and cleaning product in existence. They're even in printed receipts. Actually, one of the most rich sources of BPAs is found on those printed receipts. People are rubbing estrogen on their skin with their soap too. The key ingredient in soap is APEs. APEs create the bubbles you find while taking a shower, and it loves to go through your skin. It doesn't want to wash off in the water, it prefers to stay on your skin. I mean the fragrance stays on, doesn't it? There's phthalates found in all different kinds of plastics, but also perfumes. Even if you avoid the skincare products, you still get exposed to BP, an estrogenic chemical used in plastic that gets found in indoor air samples. For example, public barbershops, offices, elevators, and cars. You know that new car smell? That's actually estrogen. And they're actually quite attractive to us, right? That's because it tricks our body into thinking it's estrogen by mimicking estrogen. Just like how women's perfumes are attractive to men. So it feels like it's coming at us from all angles. And that'd be correct. In the 1940s, men were storming the beaches of Normandy and losing their lives. They knew this too, but they truly believed that was what men were supposed to do. Now men are storming their couches to play video games and be lazy all day. With newer technology and creations in today's world, everyone has things so much easier. Years ago without social media, men had to go learn how to pick up girls and have lines and be rejected. Today you just gotta swipe right. Years ago you had to learn how to hunt to get your food. Today you can just call Uber Eats. With everything so easy, men are becoming weaker. It's just how the saying goes. Tough times create strong men, and easy times create weak men, and society is partly to blame. Being a masculine man in these times is now called toxic masculinity. Cancel culture says you can't be a man. We need to kill all men. A lot of boys don't look up to their fathers as role models anymore. Instead, they look up to these celebrities that promote ideas like it's okay to be fat, and it's okay for men to be weak and vulnerable. If you can condition men long enough to believe that it's bad to act like a man, it's gonna have an impact. When you constantly tell men the way they are acting is toxic, eventually you will wear them down. Estrogen levels are higher in men that are being feminized. When you have low testosterone, you won't be motivated to do anything. The major mental effect of testosterone is it makes effort feel good, and that's really the root of self-improvement in itself. Self-improvement helps men improve themselves from low testosterone symptoms. If you suffer from side effects like these, there is a simple fix. When you get down to making a huge difference in natural tea levels, it's all according to your lifestyle. When you're obese, the more excess fat, the more testosterone is converted into estrogen. Lack of sleep has a big impact, and overconsuming sugar and plastic also has a big impact. You need to make some key priorities. Mine are sleep, first of all. Sleep has the greatest impact. As your day goes on from the beginning of the day to the end, your testosterone levels are going down. But getting a good amount of sleep makes your testosterone levels go up. Second for me is cutting out instant gratification. It seems like everywhere I go now, people are on TikTok, Instagram, just scrolling away. And stroking your sausage is very bad. Because every time you, you know, you trick your mind into thinking you've accomplished humanity's greatest accomplishment. 
to create offspring. You just keep cycling and repeating the release of dopamine and a lot of dopamine makes your testosterone levels go down. Next I say sunlight and exercise, they're like in the same boat both extremely important and if you live in a place where there's less sunlight go get some red light therapy cutting out plastic tap water also very important and all these things feed off each other if you get your sunlight first thing in the morning you set your circadian rhythm in motion you're sleeping better then your cortisol or stress levels go down and high levels of cortisol leads to a decrease in test levels as well it's all just a cycle that leads to healthy t levels oh also cutting out junk foods and artificial foods is very big too doing all this gets you about 80 percent there to perfect testosterone levels but as i mentioned estrogens are literally everywhere and you're not going to be able to escape all of them you're still going to have to interact with products or air molecules that have toxic stuff in it and so if doing all this isn't enough for you you can take testosterone supplements to get you to that 100 i don't know if i'm gonna say this right but tanga ali and fidogia agrestis these are shrubs that mimic the hormones you need testosterone if you're a man and estrogen if you're a woman and they will give a significant boost Hopefully you guys got something out of this video. I know I did. But if you did, please like and subscribe. And I wish you a focused, happy, and productive day.